he I could I, I've seen and there's all kinds of stuff on Wikipedia and all kinds of his Facebook and all that kind of stuff that we could talk about but I want to introduce him the way I introduced him last night I want to introduce this person with the three main questions that all of us face in our life the coward will ask is it safe vanity will ask is it politically popular will people like me will I get elected but conscience conscience will ask over and over again every single time is it right I am glad to introduce someone who is willing to stand up for what is right. Our guest tonight is none other than George Galloway, our brother in solidarity. Dear Brother Mahdi, Reverend Baker, distinguished elders, brothers and sisters, comrades and friends, wa salamu alaykum. Peace be on all of you. This has been a very, very emotional evening. Like Brother Mahdi, I was literally speechless at the end of the video. But it's my duty to find the words to lay out what's happening and what we have to do. And so I shall try my best to do it. I was already emotional coming into Dallas, Texas. I come from an Irish Catholic background. And on our wall when I was a child, we had two pictures. One was His Holiness the Pope, and the other was John F. Kennedy. <laughs> John F. Kennedy was somebody very special for us. And he was shot down dead here in Dallas. Sorry. <laughs> he was shot down dead here in Dallas because he stood for justice, and there are people in the world who are challenged by justice. He was shot down dead by the kind of people who were being whipped up on the radio today by the execrable, almost satanic Rush Limbaugh on the radio that I listened to this afternoon, using words that may lead to the same kind of thing that happened to John Kennedy, happening to your President Barack Obama. This hate speech. They're always after Muslims and clerics for hate speech. I listened to some hate speech on Rush Limbaugh radio this afternoon, I tell you. And if anything happens to President Obama, these preachers of hate of the American neocon right will have his blood on their hands. Just as their equivalents in 1963 here in Texas had the blood of John Kennedy on their hands. I was further moved by the pristine beauty and sincerity of the Reverend Baker's words. The words of Jesus that she placed before you are the whole case for those of us who are believers. Because we believe that on the last day, all we have, for we leave our money and our limousines and our houses behind us, all we have to place in front of us, in the face of God, are our deeds, what we did, and to answer the questions about what we didn't do. And I was thinking when she was speaking that she is the real voice of Christians. 
Real Christians believe in the prophets, peace be upon them. Fake Christians like George Bush and Tony Blair, they, they believe in the prophets and how to get a piece of money. That's the difference. And then we watch this extraordinarily powerful piece of work that the young members of Mass have produced here in Dallas and I hope they'll give me a copy of it so that I can spread this video far and wide in the way that subhanallah the technological revolution now allows us to because many of you are seeing me not for the first time some of you can even recite to me the words I used in the Sky News interview in <laughs> You see, this, I was in Chicago last week, I think, and some young boys, not 12 years old, from Chicago, Arab Americans, came up to me in what you people call the restroom. I've never understood why you call it a restroom. <laughs> <laughs> we are definitely two peoples divided by a common language, as Oscar Wilde said. They came up to me in the restroom and I swear to you, they recited to me in a Scottish accent <laughs> almost the entirety of my clash on Sky News in 2006. What a preposterous question! <laughs> What a silly woman you are! And you see this? Technology has set us free. We are no longer in the grip of the billionaires who own the big media companies. Now we can reach each other across the seas at the touch of a button. Now we can know what each other is doing and we can learn from each other and use each other's words and each other's resources. The future definitely belongs to us. The days of the tyrants are drawing to a close. I was listening to the Reverend Baker and thinking of St. Augustine in his wonderful book, City of God in which St. Augustine describes an encounter on the high seas between Alexander the Great, so-called, and a pirate captain, ordering the pirate to halt. Alexander demands, how dare you terrorize these waters as a thief? And the pirate captain answers, how dare you terrorize the whole world? You with your great navy and army can call yourself an emperor and can call other men as you please. Isn't that the world that we're living in today? Isn't that the world that Brother Mahdi was talking about when he pointed out the absurdity that the People who raised funds in Dallas, Texas to feed hungry children are in prison and the criminals who made the children hungry and killed them walk free because the criminals can call themselves emperors, can call themselves governments and can call other men as they please. We live in what the Reverend Baker called this upside-down world. But our day is coming. 